beehive swarm in my face. This is my mini maker. I like it exactly the way it is. So this is to show you exactly how docile and gentle these swarms can be. Hey guys, Bee Man Dan here. We say bees. I'm sitting here on the sidewalk next to this tiny little bee swarm. Let me tell you all about it. So this video is going to be for our property managers and facility managers, people who have a lot of real estate to cover. But uh, take a look at this swarm. They're actually nestled really nicely in here. It's very common to see these on a tree, on bushes, side of walls. Anytime you see them exposed, there's a 95% chance of them leaving within three days. You see how this, this is really low to the ground? Um, the, the chance of them sticking around here is really, 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 really small. Even if they're up in a tree and you see them kind of exposed, they're very rarely do they stick around. What they're looking for is something more enclosed typically. Uh, there are definitely bees that will live out in the open, but these telecom boxes, not as popular as the irrigation boxes. That's really tiny, but you've seen those green lids, uh, water meter boxes, the cement one. They'll definitely live in there. Very rarely do they build underneath metal because the metal overheats and then it melts the honeycomb. So those are just things to look for. But they'll definitely move into roofs, walls, sheds, you name it. Uh, something that is protected from the elements. Something that they can guard and protect pretty, pretty simply and easily. But exposed like this, probably not. Hands down, the most important thing everyone needs to know about swarms is that they're extremely docile 99.9% uh, .9 of the time. So the bees get a bad rap because people consider them aggressive, even killer bees, but killer bees, uh, all honeybees are what you consider defensive. They only protect their colony, protect their young. So if they've established a hive, they've got babies, they've got resources, then they're going to defend their property especially if they're getting you know attacked or they feel threatened but outside of that these guys could care less that i can sit here and i can poke at them i can pet them and hi girls there you go and they could care less because they're not going to sacrifice their lives if they get disturbed then they'll just take off and they'll go find some place else to um to establish because most likely they're going to take off anyways so if you provoke them enough they just might do that on their own one of the questions that we get asked the most is how do I get these bees to move on quicker? And the answer is leave them the frick alone. Uh, basically, the most popular thing that people try to do is just hose them down with water and that doesn't actually work to your benefit. What ends up happening is they get wet and then they you're, you're wiping out their pheromones, they have to dry off and then they have to reestablish themselves. If you were to say, hose them down from a tree, you're gonna have a clump that falls, a clump that can, ends up on another bush and a clump that still stays in the tree and they're wet and they're, they're discombobulated. And right now, these bees have some resources in their bellies. They've got enough to make their trek to go find a new home. And if you delay that process, they start to consume that and now they're screwed. And now they're stuck here, looking for, stuck here because they don't have enough resources to take off again. So that's not a good thing. True story, we've had people throw baseballs, golf balls at these guys, and that just provokes them. That doesn't actually make speed up the process. Again, 95% chance of them taking off, so just let them do their thing. Let them let nature, nature takes its course. All right, guys, I'm a big advocate for bee safety, and anytime anyone's working with a beehive, they should definitely, definitely be suited up, uh, especially Southern California. You never know when bees are gonna get upset, or if you drop something or do something, piss off a hive but bam here beehive swarm in my face this is my mini maker i like it exactly the way it is so this is to show you exactly how docile and gentle these swarms can be again uh don't recommend this don't uh don't, don't be doing this if you don't know what you're doing but let's go remove these bees and get them a new home all right so this is how we handle swarms and we do this every single time without fail because it's the best way to move swarms is I want them to pick me. I need them to pick me. I'm having this relationship with them and I want them to decide that they want to come with me versus forcing them to. So you'll see a lot of videos online. You know, I've, I saw a guy do a 15 second swarm removal where he basically just dumped them into a bag and then he took that bag and dumped into another box. And what you won't be shown is what happens afterwards, which is they're probably gonna bail. Right now, literally all I did was I put this branch right in front of the box 
and they're moving in. Inside this box is dull honeycomb. So that's a frame honeycomb from another colony and it smells like beehive, it smells familiar. So what I'm doing is I'm incentivizing to move with me by giving them something they're looking for, which is a home, an established place to, to uh, shift to. But if I were to take this and jostle them and walk away and be done with this in five minutes or, or three minutes or whatever it is, I don't really care. I'm not looking for a world record. I'm looking to rescue bees. I'm looking to find my new home, but I need them to stick around. And I don't want to, f I don't cage the queen because I don't believe in that. Uh, my approach to everything, especially working with animals, is I'm never going to do something to them I don't ever want done to myself. I don't want to be caged. I'm a wild beast. Just kidding. Uh, true story. Uh, no, I don't want to be caged. I don't want to be limited. I don't want to be confined. So I'm not going to, we don't cage the queen because of that. It's just my personal prerogative to approach this the way I see fit in the way that I would want to be handled as a bee. I'm not going to shove them through a vacuum. I'm not going to try to smoke them to where they suffocate and then they don't know what the hell they're doing. I'm not going to spray them, spray chemicals, be quick or whatever the hell these guys are doing because that's just not a cool process. I, if I were a bee, this is how I want to be handled. So it takes a lot longer, but it's a better product in terms of they're going to stick around 95% of the time. So long as they don't have a jostled car ride or whatever it is, by the time that we rescue them, they're going to stay in the box and we can find someone to adopt them. And this way we're not wasting anyone's time and the bees have a smoother transition and they can go to their forever home versus bouncing, leaving from here to some other place because they didn't like the whole process. But right now you can see them cruising in. You can hear that buzzing and that girl right there, that one right there, superstar. She's releasing a pheromone that says, hey, we're moving, we're shifting and the bees can make it by smell, by pheromones, so they're releasing the smell that's reorienting the bees into the box. And that's how it works every single time. Uh, this is a smaller colony, so this is gonna take probably about 15 minutes, uh, 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. Uh, <clears throat> they're girls after all, so they're gonna unpack of, at their own leisure and accord, and they're my boss, so they can do whatever the hell they want to on their timeline. My job is simply to be their um, human drone so there it is, fun stuff. And for us, after this, they go to a farm in Escondido. They get um, pampered a little bit. We feed them, we give other resources from other colonies that we rescued, um, pollen and propolis and, and nectar or honey. So that surplus gets fed right back to the bees so they can establish quicker. And then from there, we find a backyard beekeeper or another farmer to adopt them. So I'll fast forward through this in a bit. And I'll see you in a minute. Oh, one last thing. So <laughs> this is a much better angle. But see, they're, they're not trying to sting me. They could care less that I exist. It's not personal, I'm sure. They just want to find a home and they want to do what bees do best, which is to pollinate fruits and plants and stuff so that we can exist. We owe it to them. So please don't kill them. And that's what this whole video is about. <laughs> don't kill swarms, don't kill bees. We need them. Now, if you were to put your face right next to this beehive, I mean, you can't really tell that through video, but it's gonna smell different. And once they've released that pheromone, that smell, and that the behavior of them has changed, I can do something like this, which is super fun. This is the favorite, my favorite part. No idea if we're gonna find the queen, and honestly, she's got nothing to do with this process. Well, I mean that most respectfully, but the bees themselves, as colony, decided that, hey, we're gonna, we accept this box, we accept the bee man as is, and we love him, kind of, but we accept him and tolerate him at least enough to move with him. And they move right on in, just like that. Listen to that. So cool. Now, the idea is people say, hey, if you grab the queen, the bees will follow. Ah, uh, not quite true. Not in all circumstances, at least. In this case, if we grab the queen first inside the box, yes, the bees will, will definitely follow uh, in that circumstance. But if we were to do a removal, say, if they're already established, 
that's not going to happen. Um, they're going to stay with the baby, stay with the young, because that's the more important part to what uh, what, they, what they need, what they're looking for. But the idea is the bees chose this, chose this box. They said it's cool, and then at some point the queen's going to follow because she's going to go with her calling, with her bees, with her babies. Literally, her babies. These are all her babies. So the idea behind how we do it is uh, if I can get 99.9% .9 of the bees in the air into this box, then I'm pretty damn sure we have her. I don't need to look for her. I'm just getting the rest of the bees off the little branch. Just to make sure I didn't leave anyone behind. And that's a wrap, guys. Um, this is going to take a few more minutes, and then I'm going to start cleaning up and checking my hair. But thank you for watching. If you're watching, that means you give a flying rat's buckle as to what happens to our bees. So I salute you, the bees salute you, and I'm sure they express their love to you as well. So thanks for visiting. We'll see you guys on the next bee adventure.